Welcome back, friends. Uh, I am uh, Dr. Rajiv Korpati. I'll be talking about burnout through a series of uh, episodes. Uh, this is episode number one, where I will be talking about different aspects of burnout. Uh, first episode, which is this, I will be talking generally about what is burnout, why is it important. In episode number two, I'll be talking about the organizational causes of burnout and the solutions. And in episode three, I will be talking about the individual causes of burnout and the possible solutions to it. Now, what is burnout? Why is it important? Why should we all of us pay attention in medical profession? See, if you're not in medical profession and happen to be watching this video, and if you're in any service industry, teachers, um, airline pilots, uh, or anybody in airline industry, um, lawyers, or any service industry where you're dealing with people, even in technology where you are in HR, uh, human uh, resources departments, and other areas where you are dealing with people on one-to-one -one basis, this is a type of service industry, the fundamentals of this talk might apply to your profession as well. So my focus would be using, uh, it would be on medical profession, uh, but you can apply these uh, principles to your uh, profession as well. So why is this burnout important? There was no such term as burnout about 30 years ago. Uh, it is not that it did not exist, but it was not as prevalent as it is right now. And why is it so prevalent? We will see as we move along. Uh, so what is burnout actually? Burnout uh, in uh, healthcare profession, burnout among medical professionals is a type of job related distress, is a type of job uh, related distress where the person experiencing burnout essentially becomes uh, deaf to the surroundings, D-E-F. I came up with this mnemonic to easily remember it. So the individual essentially becomes deaf to life around him or her, to the surroundings. D uh, stands for depersonalization, depersonalization, E for emotional exhaustion, and F for functional performance, a decline in functional performance, uh, D-E-F. What this actually translates in uh, um, uh, real life is, uh, firstly, the individual, the person, the staff member, is already exhausted even before the beginning of the job uh, shift. Uh, so, you know, the, she, he or she is dragging uh, her feet uh, to work, even at work, uh, they have uh, poor levels of energy and already exhausted. Number two is they have, uh, very little patience for the people that they are supposed to be serving or the people that they are supposed to be working with or interacting with. So lack of patience. And number three is they are already committing errors at job or they are worried that they, are, uh, they will be committing uh, errors of cognition or errors of judgment at work despite adequate training. So these three things characterize uh, a burnout, and this was a definition agreed upon by the experts in this uh, area of research across the nation, and they came up with this uh, definition. So a lot of research is being done on this area of burnout, how to recognize it and how to find solutions to it. And uh, see, the interesting thing about burnout is it is not a problem that is specific to the people that are burnt out already. If you understand burnout, you understand your own organizational structure and you understand about yourself. So a burnout is, a, uh, is, is not because an individual is weak. It is, not because, it is not an individual problem. It is what we call a systems problem. The systems that we have created over decades are uh, causing a lot of distress to the individual who is supposed to be helped by the systems that uh, we created. In other words, the individual, the staff member gets crushed under the weight of the rules, regulations, policies, guidelines, standards, protocols, and so many other things that we have uh, implemented 
And we have, see the irony is we have uh, implemented all these systems to make the life of this individual easy, uh, to prevent errors, uh, to make it easy for the individual providing the care and individual receiving the care. But it has, the system has become so complicated that it is actually crushing the individual um, that is intended to be helped. So we'll be looking at this in detail in another episode, but in this one, I'm going to be generally talking about what is burnout. Now, why is it important? Uh, burnout in healthcare reached about 50%, close to 50% uh, among many areas, many uh, specialties and departments in the healthcare industry. For instance, uh, uh, burnout among the professionals in emergency department is almost close to 60%. More than half the workforce is already experiencing burnout. Experiencing burnout means, as we have just seen, the person is emotionally exhausted, depersonalized, and making errors of judgment, which is, which is very costly uh, to both the individual and to the organization. So if 50% of workforce is experiencing job-related distress in the form of burnout, uh, imagine how prevalent the problem is, and it has reached epidemic proportions, and uh, it is time to uh, recognize it and, and, uh, 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 and find solutions to mitigate this. Otherwise, as, as it gets more and more complicated in futures, as, as the systems get more complicated, as we invent, uh, as automation uh, uh, becomes uh, dominant and artificial intelligence is introduced, we are not sure whether it will actually help the individual or it will make things more complex. So uh, we'll have to see what happens in the future, but at least for the time being, it is causing quite a bit of distress to uh, the healthcare professionals. Now, if we look at what causes uh, burnout, you will see that the nature of the job itself, intrinsic to the nature of the job in this type of service, in this service industry, predisposes the individual to burnout, uh, to fatigue and stress. By nature of the job, I mean this kind of service industry where the provider of the care is constantly exposed to people who are suffering uh, people who are dying, people who are uh, in a lot of distress. So this results in what we call compassion fatigue. Compassion fatigue is uh, a type of experience, is a type of distress where uh, the provider of service is constantly exposed uh, to distressing in, uh, to distressed individuals and that leaves a mark on the provider of the care. So that results in compassion fatigue. See, in uh, medical schools, nursing schools, and pharmacy schools, and other healthcare uh, professional schools, the individual is repeatedly exposed to uh, these type of situations where uh, they, their minds are desensitized to distress, uh, to suffering. But despite that, it still results in a certain level of compassion fatigue by the end of the day, by repeated exposures. Uh, see, for instance, a person, a obstetrician, for example, goes from room to room uh, delivering babies, uh, delivering uh, uh, and uh, doing surgeries, delivering babies, and so on. So sometimes uh, she may have to go from one to room to another where she has just delivered a healthy newborn baby, and another room there might be a stillborn uh, who is uh, the, uh, the baby is born uh, and dead. Uh, so the obstetrician, the medical professional has to go and break this news and it is not an easy thing, uh, of course uh, not at all easy for the family of the, for the parents of that uh, stillborn, but it is also extremely difficult to break the news uh, without getting some level of fatigue and distress uh, from in the provider itself. So this kind of job-related uh, stress that is intrinsic, the compassion fatigue that is intrinsic to the job predisposes these type of service uh, uh, professionals to um, job-related distress and fatigue and as a result, burnout. But Th this is intrinsic, so this is not the cause of burnout in the, uh, in the current day and age. The cause of burnout is, as I just mentioned earlier, it is a systems problem. 
we have created systems upon systems, layers upon layers, uh, with uh, so many policies and regulations um, that is uh, causing a lot of, uh, in other words, if we, if we, we have created so much uh, in the name of policies and restrictions that at every step of providing the care uh, to the person uh, intended to receive the care, at every step there are hurdles, there are uh, blocks, and there are hindrances, and the individual has to um, navigate through all the so many complicated system and that can actually that actually results in distress so if we look at uh, what are the specific causes of uh, uh, burnout in medical profession you will see that one is the organizational by organization i don't mean the particular location or the hospital or the healthcare system the organizational uh, starts from the location the organization where one works all the way up to the policy makers up in the government. It uh, spans a whole spectrum of different layers that are involved in um, policy making to uh, creation of standards of care, uh, to regulations, to the people who are uh, policing the medical field uh, from uh, government, uh, to pharmaceutical industry, to technology industries, to um, uh, non-profit or non-profit organizations who are uh, policing uh, the different uh, regulations and policies that are being implemented uh, down to the level of organization. So all these come under uh, the organizational causes of burnout. So any individual who understands burnout understands the nature of his or her job. So it, it becomes uh, so much more educational if you understand, even if you're not burnt out, if you understand what is different, what is the structure of the job that I'm working in? What, where do I stand? If I'm the primary healthcare uh, provider, I'm at ground zero. If I'm, uh, if I'm an administrator, I'm at a level um, that is either managing the primary uh, players in the field or I'm making policy decisions or I'm a regulator or I'm making standards of care in uh, different areas of healthcare. So it depends on where you stand that you have a uh, basic, uh, you have a fundamental responsibility to ensure that the decisions you are making uh, are they really helping the people uh, receiving the care or you making the lives of the people at ground zero difficult? So if you understand burnout, you are understanding the nature of your job. So this is from an organizational standpoint. From an individual standpoint, it is looking within. So what are my priorities? How much can I let go of my personal time and my family time and work and dedicate uh, my uh, wo uh, my time to work. Uh, so these are the things that you're looking at from an organizational standpoint, to look within, to analyze, to speculate, to contemplate, uh, to uh, reflect upon uh, what, what uh, where do I stand in the spectrum of uh, both my family and at work, how to balance those two. So it, it becomes more of a, a reflective and comp contemplative exercise to understand burnout from an individual perspective. So uh, th it becomes so much more important uh, for everybody to understand uh, the type of distress that they're exposed to at job and analyze and uh, reflect upon why it is important that I am spending so much time at work uh, where, uh, and sacrificing so much time at home. So to wrap it up, in this episode, uh, I talked about what is burnout, what is DEF, D-E-F, uh, depersonalization, emotional exhaustion, functional performance, how prevalent the problem is, almost uh, uh, close to 50% in certain uh, fields of medical profession. Uh, and in fact, there are certain areas that you you wouldn't think uh, professionals in that uh, specialty are burnout. For example, endocrinology, rheumatology, neurology, they are way up high in uh, almost close to 50% uh, uh, burnout uh, um, uh, prevalence in that, even in those uh, areas of uh, medical profession. So we looked at how prevalent it is. We looked at 
why the job uh, itself uh, even without any ex extrinsic factors, the service industry, the service nature of the job itself may predispose an individual to uh, burnout despite adequate training in, in their specialties. And fourth uh, point, we talked about the organizational causes, how uh, creating different layers of complexity uh, and the individual who is providing the care get crushed under all these rules, regulations, policies, guidelines, uh, and unable to deliver the care that he or she was uh, primarily trained to do. And uh, finally, we looked at uh, why it becomes so much more important to reflect upon uh, uh, and to look within and uh, set our priorities and say no to certain things as to certain. So we have to learn to say no when we have to say no to certain things. And this is a, a skill that you actually acquire over a period of time. Sometimes it is innate, sometimes it's easy for some, but for others, they have to learn. They have to learn to say no to certain things. And so it is a, a skill that you slowly acquire as you go along. But for that, you have to commit a certain uh, space in your mental space uh, and time uh, and dedicate to see what is the nature of the job that I'm in. And so these are the things that uh, are important. And uh, remember that to understand burnout is to understand yourself, the nature of the job and the nature of uh, your home and your life at home. So in the next episode, I'll be talking about organizational causes in a little bit more detail and what could be the solutions for that particular aspect or cause of burnout. Uh, till we meet next time, uh, be good and stay healthy. This is uh, Dr. Rajiv Kaurapati signing off.